Hey everyone, Caitlin Leopold, your registered dietitian. And today we are talking about grocery store shopping. So today I just wanted to cover kind of like some tips and what to look for to make the best choice for you when it comes to um, grocery store shopping. So just some general tips before we get into specific food groups or items. Um, the first one, and you might have heard this one before, but a good rule of thumb is to shop the perimeter of the store and at least doing this kind of first. So as you can see by the picture, right, most of the stuff on the perimeter is the things we should eat more of, right? So produce, seafood and your meat, and then definitely our eggs and dairy, right? So most of those things are kind of the most important things when we are shopping in a grocery store. And um, we can shop in the middle, but just right, make sure that we're not leaning towards our heavily processed things, right? So there's some good foods in the middle, such as right nuts, beans, grains, um, even some of your canned fruits and vegetables, which are in the center aisles. But again, we just want to limit the most processed um, junk foods, even the sweetened drinks in the middle. Okay, so the biggest thing, and we're gonna go over this following slides too, is just take the time and read the labels, especially in that metal section, to make the best choice for you. Um, the next two, um, don't go hungry and plan out a weekly menu. Um, so why we don't want to go hungry, right? We tend to buy more things than one we need, and typically we, we tend to give into cravings a little bit more when we go completely hungry, right? So if I'm starving and I find something that I probably shouldn't have, I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. I wanna put that in my cart, right? So if I have a little bit in my stomach and I'm not completely um, hungry, I'm more likely to stay on track and pick the things on my list. I'm plan out a weekly menu and make a list and come prepared, right? So coming in with a plan will generally just help you stay on track, especially for our health and even our budget. Um, and we make a smarter choice instead of meandering through the aisles, right? If I don't have a list and I'm not prepared, I'm just kind of walking around. Again, you're more likely to pick something up that we, we probably don't need or, or should have. Another tip I usually use, which I'm going to show you what is in season, but buy fruits and vegetables in season. So the reason why I typically say this, one, they, write, they usually taste a little bit better when they're in season, and two, they're typically cheaper when they're actually in season. So I live by this as well. It's kind of how I rotate my, my fruits and vegetables in a sense. So I tend to lean towards the stuff that's in season when it is, and then um, stay away or don't buy the stuff as much that's out of season. It's gonna, you know, put a bigger dent in my wallet. <clears throat> and then again, just in general, right, take the time and read labels for the best option. So I'm going to show you a few food labels today, but just as a reminder, um, we actually covered food labels in depth um, on webinar number eight. So if you have that from the past, I definitely recommend just going through that and learning again, essentially how to read labels more in depth. So just as that as a reference for you. <clears throat> so first is fruits and vegetables. So the Typically for most of us, that's kind of the first thing we see in the grocery store. <clears throat> so ideally we wanna choose fresh fruits and vegetables that are firm and unblemished. So again, kind of taking the time and picking the ones that are best for you. Um, purchase only the amount you need for a few days at a time. So they don't lose their nutritional value or spoil before you eat them. So this is kind of a big one I typically say. I know it's not fun going to the grocery store frequently, but again, I typically buy the fruits and vegetables that are season and I only buy a few at a time. So the longer we have some of them, um, they can lose some of their nutritional content in them as well. So just be aware of that. And it's just easier, right, um, to store them so they don't spoil. Um, typically too, I say if you can't necessarily store them for a long period of time, frozen vegetables, are okay. I would say typically a bulk of my vegetables, besides a few of them that I regularly buy, are typically frozen, especially the ones that I use in my meals. Um, I'd say my fresh fruits and vegetables are typically more like snacks, unless I'm eating a salad. 
Well, that's completely fine. Um, just watch the sauces. Um, frozen is typically a better option if you can't get fresh than canned. And I'm going to talk about canned here in a little bit as well. But canned can um, have a little bit more sodium in it than your frozen. Um, and then I said just to watch out and avoid the frozen fruits and vegetables with added sugars or sauces. So as I said, typically plain is better and add your own versus all what they add. Because again, that can add up in your sugar and sodium for the vegetables. And then two, fresh fruits and vegetables actually should make up the largest part of your grocery list, right? As a reminder, with a, little, a lot of my groups, I typically say aim for at least six servings of vegetables and three servings of fruit a day, right? We need our vitamins and minerals and a lot of our nutrients. So it should make up a bulk of your grocery list. And then avoid overcooking your vegetables. So again, some are more sensitive than others. <clears throat> and I um, actually talked about that in our, our micronutrient webinar. <clears throat> but the longer you cook a lot of them, it actually can decrease some of the nutritional content. So just watch that. Again, fresh is best and lightly steamed or roasted when it comes to cooking them. So again, um, I added this chart to show you what typically is in season when um, and when it comes to fruits and vegetables, okay? So I added both fruits and vegetables and it kind of goes through each season. So it with, with it being with it being spring right now, fruits, right, berries are becoming in season, so they're typically cheaper than they would be in other seasons. Plums and peaches, even your melons are in season right now when it comes to vegetables, right? Our asparagus, cucumber, zucchini, your green beans and peas, your mushrooms and potatoes. So again, typically if you buy stuff in season, it can be a little bit easier on our wallet. So this is just here as a reference to you guys. And next is our protein. So again, when making a list, right, protein is important as well, just as our fruits and vegetables. Um, when shopping for protein sources, ideally you want to choose lean meats, skinless poultry, and fish. So these should be kind of the bulk of your protein for the week. Try to limit your red meat to two to three times a week. And reason being is it's related to our saturated fat content. So especially if you do have an issue with your cholesterol, it's just a good idea to watch the red meat amounts. I mean, also a good rule of thumb that I typically say, if you kind of buy, you know, salmon at the deli that has seasoning on it, just kind of watch this. I say typically aim for meats without added sauces or seasonings, because again, Especially if you're watching, you know, your blood pressure and your cholesterol, a lot of those seasonings can add up to a lot of excess sodium. So just be aware of that. There are alternative seasonings, especially with sodium. Like I use Mrs. Dash a lot for a lot of my, when I'm cooking my meats, because it is um, actually sodium free. So just be aware of that. Legumes, eggs, and nuts are also a great source of protein and typically I just say limit a lot of our processed meats such as our hot dogs, sausages, bacon, and our lunch meats. Um, they tend to be higher in saturated fat and sodium, um, reason being typically too so they can stay good longer on the shelf as well so they're kind of packed with a lot of that excess sodium. So general rule of thumb for meats when it comes to aiming for what a certain amount of weeks I typically say, again, aim for that lean meats. So again, turkey, chicken um, as well. Most days of the week, I kind of always say aim for a fish source, um, specifically those that are higher in omega-3s, which is our healthy fats, uh, at least two times a week, such as our salmon and tuna. And then typically I say aim for one meal a week, to be a plant-based source. So what I mean by that would be your nuts and seeds or your legumes, which are our beans. So any beans, right? Navy, kidney, um, our chickpeas are all included in that, that legume category. So adding a variety of protein is kind of best and just avoid, again, a lot of those processed meats or any of those meats with added 
you know, seasonings or breading on it. I'd rather have you add that on versus buying it like that. So this is actually one of my favorite comparisons to make. <clears throat> um, and I am using this as a disclaimer, okay, just because I'm comparing turkey bacon and center cut bacon. I mean, you can still buy and eat your turkey bacon. I'm just showing you guys this comparison to show you how important it is to actually really compare food labels and not just assuming that certain things are healthier. So the first thing I want to compare is ingredients. I'm not sure if you could actually, um, hopefully you can see it on the bottom of the screen um, for my center cut bacon. But looking at turkey bacon, there is a lot more ingredients than your, <clears throat> than your center cut. So center cut, if you can't see it, I'll read it. But center cut ingredients is just cured with water, salt, sugar, sodium phosphate, sodium ascorbate, and sodium nitrate. That's literally all that's in your center cut bacon. So actually looking at ingredients, center cut actually does have a least amount of ingredients. So again, taking the time to read and labels is important because if you actually look at both of these nutrition facts, notice the difference in serving sizes. So turkey bacon actually shows serving size of one slice versus your center cut is two slices and I do want to advocate this is center cut bacon I'm not saying all bacon is like this but this is just center cut so be aware of that so to make these comparable you actually have to times all of your turkey bacon facts by two for them to actually be comparable right for two slices so looking at that if you look at calories and compare the two right if you times the turkey bacon times two you're actually getting 70 calories for two slices versus your center cut, you're getting 60. And same thing, calories from fat, you're getting 50 versus the 45. Total fat, again, you're getting five grams of fat from your turkey bacon and you're getting 4.5 from your center cut, so pretty similar. Um, saturated fat is a little bit higher, so you're getting two grams versus three. Um, I mean, the center cut bacon's a little bit higher, but not too drastic cholesterol um so if you look it is 15 milligrams for both but if you times that by two for the turkey bacon if you have two slices it would be 30 milligrams so it is actually higher in cholesterol sodium so timesing that by two again is 280 milligrams so your turkey bacon is actually higher in sodium so if you're watching your blood pressure again that's something you want to watch um our protein so again, multiplying that by two, you're getting four grams of protein for your turkey bacon versus five grams of your center cut bacon. So the biggest thing, as I said, I want you to get out of this is don't just assume because it's turkey bacon, it's automatically better. Because as you can see, most of, most of the, all the nutrition facts is pretty similar. It's not, and if not a little bit higher than our center cut. The only thing that was less was one gram less of saturated fat. That's it. All the other ones, it was a little bit higher than your center cut. So again, it's definitely important to take the time and read through labels just because of what I mentioned. So on the topic of labels, when it comes to our grains, it's definitely important to make sure we're reading labels, okay? So typically we always wanna choose whole grains over our refined white flour, breads, pastas, and cereals. Why is that, right? Because our typically our white breads are going to be more high glycemic, which means they're going to affect our blood sugars quickly, and they actually provide us with less nutrients than our whole grains. So ideally when choosing grains, always make sure we're getting 100% whole grain products. So it's actually key to look at ingredients here. So when you're looking at ingredients for bread, the first ingredient should always use the word whole. That should literally be the first ingredients. If it says enri enriched or fortified or any of those terms or bleached, um, any of those things, that means that first ingredient is not actually whole grain. It should literally say whole as the first ingredient for it to be whole grain. So um, just make sure we're reading that. I did want to talk a little bit today about sprouted grains. So the first thing I am going to say too, this is typically in the freezer section. Okay, so I did put a picture of it in the right 
lower corner. That's Ezekiel bread, which is a sprouted grain. So sprouted grains are whole grains that have been soaked and left to germinate. So the things about sprouted grains is it actually can increase many of the grain's key nutrients, including our B vitamins, um, even vitamin C, folate, even fiber, and some of the essential amino acids. So it does have a little bit of a better nutritional profile than our ungerminated grains. And that too, it typically is a little bit more um, lower glycemic than your even whole grains because it takes our body a little bit longer to break them down because they are sprouted. So Ezekiel bread is a great choice. And as I said, it is in the freezer section and should be stored in your freezer because it is sprouted versus the um, other whole grains. So that's an option for you too. Um, I added other two pictures of some of the common breads I buy. So Dave's Killer Bread is also a great bread to buy. Um, pretty clean ingredients. You should basically, um, when it comes to knowing the ingredients, most of them are pretty common. Um, and then typically, again, Brown Brewery is one that I like to buy. Just um, for me personally, I like the taste of it. And it is 100% um, whole grain. So again, that should be the first ingredient for any grain product. So just be sure of that. That comes with pastas as well you still wanna make sure that's um, the 100% whole grain when it comes to pastas as well. Typically when we are in the store, if I do my, my grocery shop tour, I typically talk about um, bonza pasta as well. So bonza pasta you do find in your, um, your um, where you typically find your other pasta. So bonza is actually made from chickpeas, which that's fine too, that's a great ingredient. And you actually get a lot more fiber from your bonza um, as well as a little bit more protein because it's from a legume so your chickpeas. So bonza is one of my go-to's when it comes to pasta. It's in like an orange box um, and, and when it comes to being comparable taste wise I think it's the most comparable to your typical pastas um, as well. So I mean it may taste a little bit different but not as significant so I would definitely recommend checking checking that out when it comes to grains. But otherwise, again, otherwise we want it 100% whole, always. So next is our beverages. So just like the picture, right, water is actually one of the best choices we can make, right? 70% of our body is made up of water and we need it to just function properly. And I put this on the bottom bullet, I should have put the first bullet, but we want to aim to drink for half our body weight and ounces of water, what I always tell my clients, right, it should be an extension of my arm. So we wanna to continue to drink a lot of water throughout the day, that should be our main beverage. So aiming for water, um, mineral water is fine, seltzer water, I mean, these are lower in calories, but typically um, I say water first, just our plain old fashioned water. Um, herbal teas are fine as well as black coffee. So notice a lot of these are no calories. So that's kind of key there. And I put black coffee for that reason too. Um, just watch our content for the caffeine. But black coffee versus, you know, all those flavored coffees, because we're getting a lot of added sugars and added calories when we do that. So avoid kind of pre-made drinks and sodas with added sugars. I even say that with diet sodas. I'd rather have you have, you know, a salsa water or mineral water versus even your diet sodas for that um, artificial sweeteners. Okay. So typically water first and avoiding all of those other drinks there. Fruit juices, um, typically I do add those on this list and I wanna just claim that I'd rather have you consume your fruit in a natural source versus in a fruit, in a fruit juice content. So fruit juices are actually high glycemic, which again, this means our body breaks it down faster and it may cause a spike in our blood sugar. So yes, that does affect our, di our diabetics, but it also affects those of us that aren't diabetic too. We don't want to consistently consume high glycemic foods because over time, right, that can cause a lot of other issues in our body and can lead to type 2 diabetes down the road. So fruit juices are high glycemic. Um, they actually do get rid of some of the fiber content when we make it into a juice. So again, we're not getting that fiber that we would if we were consuming a whole fruit and they do typically have a lot of added sugars, so they should be limited. So I'm not saying completely avoid them, but don't make them a consistent part in your diet. 
okay? So typically, I'd rather have you have those fruits in their natural full state versus in the juice form. And then again, just a reminder, aim to drink half your body weight in ounces of water. Dairy products. So typically, when it comes to buying, you know, low fat, reduced fat, or even full fat dairy, um, I talk a lot about this with my clients, but the option typically depends on your health goals and your medical history. So general rule of thumb, if you, if you consume a lot of saturated fat throughout the day, I typically say do not consume whole grains. But if your diet is very kind of lower in saturated fat, um, full fat's completely fine. There are certain benefits to full fat dairy. But again, if you consume a lot of red meat and cheese throughout the day, then typically you want to aim for the lower fat because you're already consuming a lot of that saturated fat, okay? So if you want a more in-depth and further guidance, um, please just contact me and I can kind of um, guide you a little bit clearer with, with that. Um, Greek yogurt. So I'm a huge advocate of Greek yogurt. It is an excellent option. And why I prefer it over regular yogurt is because it does have about twice as much protein than regular, regular yogurt. So the biggest thing with this, and I know it doesn't taste as good, but I'd rather have you aim for, you know, your plain <clears throat> unflavored Greek yogurt. And then again, add your own sweeteners. I mean, you can add fruit to it. You can add your own, like such as honey, even some maple syrup to it to sweeten it up versus buying it already sweetened. Okay, we want to limit our added sugars on the food label. If you remember me again, refer back to week eight. Um, but that's kind of what I usually emphasize um, there. We don't want to buy it all with added sugars. We want to limit that and maybe add our own versus having them add it and processing. Do be careful of yogurts labeled light as they may contain artificial sweeteners um, and, and as well, again, avoid the flavored yogurts, which they can contain a lot of extra added sugar. So plain is ideal. Um, again, just take time to read the labels. Typically, again, with this, the least amount of ingredients, the better. And adding your own flavorings versus buying it already flavored. Those are kind of the key concepts there. I do emphasize cottage cheese because I think a lot of times we forget that it's a great source of protein. So cottage cheese is great. Um, typically, I think I did, again, mention this on my food label webinar, but make sure you read ingredients. And I use this always in life, but be aware that the cheapest is not always the best choice. So um, that's my challenge for you next time you go in the grocery store and you do like cottage cheese, just compare your Daisy brand to your store brand. Okay, there's a lot of extra ingredients in our store brand versus our Daisy. So just getting a good concept of knowing, right, the least amount of ingredients in this product, the better, okay? Frozen foods. So I know I kind of mentioned this a little bit when I talked about fruits and vegetables. So frozen fruits and vegetables actually can be convenient when in a time crunch. They do actually contain more nutrients than your canned Okay, because they're frozen kind of in, in peak ripeness in a sense. So they do have more nutrients for you. Um, actually, typically the one on the side is kind of the common ones that I do buy a lot. As I said, I, I use frozen foods, um, frozen vegetables, I'm sorry, commonly in meals in a pinch, right? Because they're easy just to heat up really fast. So again, just avoid the frozen fruits, which could have added sugars and avoid the vegetables with added sauces. Okay, because again, that's a lot of extra calories that we don't necessarily need. When it comes to frozen foods in general, just be aware that frozen entrees, frozen pizzas, again, frozen breakfast foods, and even breaded chicken, fish, or those appetizers, um, just be aware because a lot of those can be packed with added calories um, and added sodium. So the biggest thing with sodium, if you struggle with your blood pressure, um, just be aware of sodium in general. And that's the biggest kind of thing I usually say when grocery shopping is just be aware of how much sodium is in everything, especially the more processed and packaged food items, okay? Especially when we're buying an entree frozen, I think a lot of times we're not even being aware of the sodium, we're just being aware of the calories. So just be just be aware of that. I know frozen pizzas are, are really high in sodium, especially if they're quote unquote healthy. Um, just be aware of reading the sodium for that. 
canned foods. So again, canned fruits and vegetables are fine. So we, when it comes to that, as I said, choose fresh first, then frozen, and then typically canned as a last option. So why it's not ideal is they can be high in sodium, which I've mentioned, have added sugars, and again, um, a lot of the fiber and nutrient content has decreased in the canned. So the biggest thing I typically say, if you know canned is your only option, especially if that's a budget issue, um, that's completely okay. But the biggest thing when you do buy canned is just make sure you strain and rinse because those juices in the cans, especially with the vegetables, is typically where that excess sodium is stored, okay? Just to keep it fresh and have a good shelf life, they pack it with that sodium and that juice. So just make sure you strain and rinse it. I mean, even twice wouldn't be a bad idea and then heat it up there. When it comes to soups, um, do aim for low fat or low sodium soups that have a broth instead of a cream base. So just be aware of that as well. And then just avoid our canned pasta products um, and high sodium, high fat gravies. So again, our pasta products are okay. But again, with the sodium, just be aware and try to make the best choice for you when it comes to my pastas. I typically, again, I want clean ingredients and the least amount of ingredients, as well as checking that sodium content. So dressings and oils. I didn't put a too, a too, too much on the slide, but we do just wanna choose high quality oils such as olive, canola, walnut, or even avocado oils. Um, when cooking or making dressings or marinades. The biggest thing with salad dressings is oils, just read the labels because they may contain, you know, poor quality oils and sugars um, and even high fructose corn syrup. So I did on the side put an extra virgin olive oil, which is great, even an avocado oil. So avocado oil is one of the most common ones I use. It does have a high smoke point meaning it can stand high temperatures when cooking um, and not losing that nutrient content. So that is there for you as well. I did add some of the, um, some of the better dressings with a little bit more um, ingredients. So if you do like hummus or chickpeas, um, Odang Hummus is a pretty good brand. As you can see, the ingredients are, are pretty clean. Um, first ingredient being chickpeas, um, all natural lemon juice, water, extra virgin olive oil, and this is for Caesar, by the way, um, but Parmesan cheese, white vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, tahini, garlic powder, salt, and spice, right? I know what all those things are. So that's a pretty, pretty clean label and calories are actually pretty low. So I just want to say my biggest disclaimer with this is you kind of have to like hummus to like this one because it does kind of have that flavor in a sense, but they are a pretty good um, brand there. Primal Kitchen is also not a bad ingredient. It does have a little bit more ingredients, but again, most of these things, we all know what they are, right? So this is for the Caesar as well. Avocado oil, water, coconut aminos, organic apple cider vinegar, gum acai, guar gum, distilled vinegar, roasted garlic, sea salt, black pepper, eggs, yeast, lemon juice concentrate, garlic powder, and rosemary extract. So a little bit... Um, bigger of an ingredient profile, but still um, on the better side when comparing um, dressings. So that's kind of the biggest thing when it comes to dressings. I know Primal Ranch is a lot, not a lot, but it is higher in calories too versus your O'Day hummus. Um, so again, just taking the time and reading labels is kind of key when it comes to grocery shopping there. Again, in summary, um, in the end here too, if you have any more questions, just reach out to me but it's key to make a meal plan for the week or even the month in advance, right? And make a list and come prepared when shopping, right? We don't wanna go hungry and we want to avoid meandering through the aisles, okay? So if we have a list and we know exactly what we need in the canned or processed foods kind of pastas, right? I'm just gonna come in the aisle, grab that versus meandering through and kind of grabbing things that we shouldn't. Again, be mindful and take the time to read through labels. That is key, um, when, especially if you're first getting into the habit of, of reading labels and grocery shopping. Um, with reading labels, it does take a while, um, but typically you'll come out knowing that you did make a better choice for yourself and your family, um, just taking time and reading through. 
Again, buy fresh fruits and vegetables first, then frozen without added sauces or sugars, then canned. That's the best choice nutritionally that you can make for yourself. Um, and then just again, that tip to buy fresh fruits and vegetables in season, especially if you're shopping on a budget because they can be a little bit cheaper than just buying, you know, all the fruits and vegetables, okay? That's that. Um, and that's about all I have for you today on grocery store shopping. Um, just key to, if you are here in our club at Piqua, I do offer a grocery shop tour in store um, throughout the year. So just keep an eye out on that. We dive a little bit deeper into specific aisles and foods. Um, so today was just kind of a brief summary. So just let me know. Um, again, thank you for listening and reach out if you have questions. Um, you all will have my email after I'm um, sharing this. So just let me know. And as always, thank you for listening.